everybody. Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. Way on the other side of the screen there is Mr. Van Metchke, who just had a birthday recently. This is true. So happy birthday, Mr. Van. Happy uh, birthday. He's, he's, Thank you. I know it's hard to tell, but he is now 29 years old. So yeah, he's 39. almost 30. 39. Oh, sorry, 39. Yeah. I kicked it to 39 right. this year. It's a little bit more believable. <laughs> as long as you're making up numbers, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But we're uh, we're excited to have a very special guest with us, somebody we've known for uh, many years because he's only like you know two years younger than thirty nine. Uh, That's true. So he's he's right there with with Mr. Van there. But uh, uh, our friend Scott Ragsdale. Scott, hey, hey, hi everybody. We're excited. We're excited because you've uh, you've been around the block once or twice. You you've got this kind of crazy career. That yeah. has been a musician growing up in and in, in the church doing audio, and then hey, let's go mix Oprah and her show, and then back to some church stuff, and then let's go out on tour worldwide with uh, Joe Bonamassa, and now you're back in the church. So like, either you don't know what you want to do when you grow up, or you're pretty good at this. Wow, so many choices in that description. <laughs> <laughs> But what are some of the other stuff you've done? Because obviously you were at Willow Creek for a long time, right? Yeah, Willow for 14 years, um, which was an amazing journey. Uh, I was at a church in St. Louis before that, uh, basically leaving right out of college. Ended up mixing a, a youth group, um, and it planted some awesome seeds in my heart that this is what I want to be a part of. And mm-hmm. it uh, just kind of launched it. I went from the youth group. Uh, to the main service, and that whole run lasted seven years, did some fun stuff, helped build a recording studio at this church. My name is in the first Third Day Offerings album. Um, They recorded at three different churches. Yeah, three three different churches, and they chose some of the cuts on that record from uh, Life Christian Center in St. Louis, Missouri. At the time, uh, we we did a couple integrity projects with Jackie DeShetler, and that's kind of how I got connected with Integrity. And then that ended up linking me to this little guitar player named Lincoln Brewster, um, who mm. I, I got to go out on his first tour. Uh, and yeah, lots of stories. I mean, I could go so many places um, yeah. as my career has, has done its thing. I, I just always tell people um, when you're mixing, in this case, you just never know who's in the room. So yeah. kill it every time be great to work with because there could be somebody in the room that's going to hear your work and they're going to go who is this guy mixing because i want him to mix my stuff and that that's kind of my story all the way through so you know that's so funny because i was just telling somebody that the other day they said how did you get into this they said well i was mixing this band when i was 18 and they were like the opening band but all the bands that were the headliners uh, liked my mix better than the dude that they were that they had mixing and after the show (laughs) they started coming up to me and going, Hey, we got a gig like in two weeks. Would you come and mix our band too? You know? And that's, I mean, that's how I started mixing just a ton of bands when I was young. Cause you know, you yeah, just I know. mean, you don't know. I just think of the, the Bible verse, you know, the small beginnings thing. Mm. I think we all have to start small. I think it's healthy to, to start small. Um, oh, Cause yeah. there's so many things you got to learn before you get in the hot seat. And, uh, so kill it at the small stuff and it will pay off big time later. Well, and I think, um, you are, I I've heard, uh, Robert Scoville, a friend of yours, um, say this many times, but you know, he's been very, uh, humble often in saying, well, you know, I'm not, definitely not the best guy out there, but I've always tried to be great to work with. And so mm. I think you are very similar in, 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 that you are also very talented, even if Robert won't admit it, uh, or, or at least in public. Uh, he is a, a, an enormously talented mixer, but he's also just somebody who's great to be around, great to work with. And I think that's yeah. something that, that as long as I've known you anyway, that's something I've always noticed too. It's just, I just want to work with Scott. I just want to do stuff with Scott because Scott's fun and great Man, to work with. Well, thank you so much. I mean, yeah, Robert has been such a mentor to me. He showed up at Willow Creek in 2005 and walked on my stage. And I nearly fell over. <laughs> saying, what are you doing here? Um, and for sure, the things that I've learned from him, uh, 
another being be as prepared as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Preparation just pays off in spades um, in this business, especially as you do it a lot. You begin to understand what could go wrong. And so mm -hmm. you try to cover all those aspects of making sure that, you know, you can handle, you know, what's thrown at you before it happens. And it that also makes a huge difference in somebody wanting to come back and work with you. Yeah. Well, so there you go. If you're if you're young and thinking about a career, get good at what you do, be great to work with, be prepared. I mean, like we could be done right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I mean, I mean, and, and Scott, you and I have had this conversation. I mean, how many guys when we talk about how many guys, uh, people, folks in this industry that we've worked with that were like, wow, they're really super talented. Um, I will never, I would never hire them again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's an know. unfortunate story. Yeah. Well, yeah, it happens it's, a lot. it's very common. I mean, I did a show for seven years, uh, that they hired me back every year and the lighting guy that worked at that same show, um, he was awful to work with. I mm. mean, luckily I didn't have to work with him cause I was on the audio side and I, you know, but I would hear him on the headset. He'd be yelling at people and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. His designs were amazing. I mean, he was a great LD. I glad I only did one show with him a year cause it was just, and I, I'm like, man, I wouldn't work with that. I wouldn't work for that guy, but you know? Yeah. So. And just to bring some understanding to this, I mean, I always think hurting people hurt others. And a lot of times, guys get in this business and go on the road or they do things and they are like a wounded dog and guys we like to stay busy because if we're busy we feel productive and it gets our mind off our junk mm. but eventually the junk raises its ugly head and sometimes that's an on calm or in a group because what we do is stressful it is there's a mm -hmm. lot of details there's a lot of responsibility and if you're struggling you know with stuff it comes out sideways. And the sad thing about that is it's going to eventually cost you your job. Yeah. Yeah, for no, sure. That's good. Well, I will say I met this guy many years later and he is totally mellowed out. So clearly somebody <laughs> had gotten this clearly. I mean, he'd gone on, he went on to some big stuff and, and yeah. uh, luckily though, somebody, I think somebody had, had sat him down and said, if you don't change what you're doing, you're not going to last in this business. Absolutely. Right. And the other thing, we all know each other. Right. We do. We, yeah. you know, like just going to Infocom, which started this whole conversation we have today. I love seeing you guys. It's, that was like a three year, almost four year for some people hiatus. Yeah. And it was just a big hug fest through that entire yeah. event. Just yeah. seeing everybody we haven't seen. And it, it just felt great. But again, there's probably some guys on our, that weren't there because they took themselves out of the race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's a lot of people that we miss, you know, it's, it's really funny. Uh, you know, Duke and I go to the shows together, obviously. And, and there's so many people that were like, well, you know, I haven't seen that guy in a long time. Or, and then when somebody does pop up, you're like, wow, I haven't, I didn't even know he was still right. doing this. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, yeah. and, you know, when we saw you, I mean, we literally just dropped our bags right literally in the middle of the aisle and just sat there and talked for, uh, <laughs> I don't know how long we, get, how long we talked for, but it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It just was to, awesome. Yeah, just to, just to, just to see you and 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 it's always good catching up. Honestly, that's one of the only reasons I go to trade shows anymore. Still, because to be honest, most of the stuff, <laughs> except getting your hands on the gear, um, you can you don't have to go to a trade show to find out. I mean, we're old. Oh enough. no. Well, at least I'm old enough to remember you had to go to a trade show to even find out what the gear did. Well, that sure. was before the internet was invented. So, well, that's, <laughs> well, that no, that's true. Very true. I started out before. Well, I started out before. You know, there was. You know, people had companies had websites and stuff like that. So you had to go to, you know, you had yeah. to go to NAM or you had to go to AES or whatever to actually see stuff and meet people. But it was great because you made a lot of contacts. And so I still know those a lot of those people today because I met them at a trade show for the first time. You know, so yeah, and you know, not to go off the tracks too much, but we are humans and we were made for connection and we are the most unconnected society right now because these little devices right here were supposed to replace the people and they can't, they never will. Right. It's the way God created us as humans. And so we, I treasure going to those trade shows and, and to see people like you and, and to reconnect. It gives, gives me joy, gives me life. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and and people is why we wanted to have you on today. Because when when we <laughs> got caught at Infocom, one of the things we spent a lot of time talking about was just you know kind of the current state of life, but also you know yeah. church tech, and what we're seeing in the church today, and how um, there are a lot of young young people, uh, men and women, coming up in church production, but they're they they haven't had a lot of the same experience that some of us did or um maybe they haven't sought out mentors like some of us did or were fortunate to um and and that kind of got us into some long conversation and i think um you know what you said earlier was so cool and I, i'd love to talk more about it because i think i think if we're more intentional with this um it would be really great for not only our churches now but the church the church in 20 years it's you got yourself you started mixing in youth group um yeah. and you know when you start mixing in youth group you're not thinking oh in a couple of years i'll be out on a world tour like that you, at least you shouldn't be thinking that no uh, <laughs> don't but, think you shouldn't yeah you shouldn't even think about that but you never know I, and that's like i there's a there's a young guy um who was at the church i was a tech director at for for almost 10 years in iowa back in the 2000s and you know he was like 12 when i was there but that guy had his hands on a camera like at all times and that guy is now working at elevation church he's doing some crazy stuff um i mean it blows my mind some of what he does with a camera photography and video wise and most of that's because he got to start as a kid so i love to pick up this conversation what do you see in um or what do you see as our biggest opportunity um to kind of raise up the next generation of techs well i <laughs> I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. Sometimes there's, I'm going to throw it on the other side too, uh, to be proactive in making your career happen. I got a story of, there's a local sound company down the road for, from me and they've been getting uh, internships from a college. And they've had one out of 20 stay. Because the first week they're wrapping cables or they're cleaning up from a festival. And these kids just think it's all sitting behind a console and, and messing around with rock stars or something. They, they don't get the scope of the job and they take themselves yeah. out of the game right there. I mean, I, I don't get it. It's like, you know, our world of production, I think, I don't know, it's the like iceberg thing, you know, the little tip sticking out of the water, you know, is what you see when the show is actually happening or the service is actually happening. But this huge chunk of our job is soldering and wrapping cables and ordering gaff tape and are the batteries in stock are the wireless frequencies coordinated is the stage prepped i could go on and on and on and that's all a part of it so just be aware that the glam of what you think the job is and you get all the tattoos and the piercings and you're ready to go it's not quite that and i use that reference because that's what a lot of the younger people i heard did and they showed up all cool and then were they couldn't be cool enough to like wrap a pick cable or clean up an amp rack that sat out on a dusty field during a festival um mm. and you guys i know you both you have done this so it's not like i'm telling you guys anything you don't know about the job so yeah show up and just be ready to do anything um and be great to work with and you have to learn the basics the basics um will sustain you through a lot and if you skip that, you're going to be in trouble. So, well, and I think, you know, that's what we, I mean, I think, you know, you, me and, and Stone had a conversation years ago about teach training. I don't know if I feel exactly the same way I did then, but we were like, yeah, I still think that all young people should learn on to mix on an analog console first, you know, and they should be kind of be forced to make on like a Mackie 24, eight or something like that. And, and, to actually have actual signal flow that's actually going through the channel, you know, electronically. Sure. Understand all that. I don't know if I feel exactly the same way. I kind of still do, but just starting with those basics is, is a giant thing. And I think, you know, when you were talking, I was thinking, I don't think a lot of pastors and executive pastors, and I think music pastors do, but I don't think a lot of the pastors, executive pastors at churches understand how much work, goes into making a great service look easy from the te on, from the technician side, you know? I, I would say that is a true statement. <clears throat> I won't fault them, but at the same no. time, you don't do the job, um, you're gonna not know a lot about the job. 
And yes, for sure, when you see a service happening and you see a choir and a band and all the transitions from a video to a talking head, to, if that goes all smooth, there's a lot of behind the scenes from mm -hmm. multiple points. And it, yeah, it takes a, takes a team of very talented people that are in relationship and communicating well and, uh, and they're, and they're well led. So yes, there, there's a lot that probably some leadership have no idea how it happens. And what's really bad is when they go to a conference, like they used to come to Willow and see us pull off a conference and not really understand everything and all the people and talents and gift sets that made that happen and then go home and throw it on their people. Why can't you do this? Or even, even, yep. ge even gear. They don't understand how, <laughs> how, well, well, you know, they don't, they don't understand <laughs> the amount of gear, you know, yeah. uh, that goes into doing something like that. Yeah. And it's like, that's, I think people that's our favorite on every project. <laughs> We're like in the middle of a project and all of a sudden we'll get a call from the worship pastor, the tech guy and went, Hey, pastor just went to a conference and we're just going, Oh boy. <laughs> yep. That <laughs> yeah. story is repeated. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're actually doing a project right now that literally we've been talking to them for an entire year. Their tech director. Uh, I'm surprised he's actually still there. So I won't name him, but uh, they literally, we were ready to pull the trigger on the original uh, project and there, the campus pastor went to a conference and basically blew the whole job up and started from scratch. Now we are actually installing it next week, which is great. But the, yeah. it, the whole, the whole thing like got stood on its head because somebody, because a one pastor went to a conference. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's great to research. Um, when you hear or see something, um, be slow, um, especially for your team, because, um, it's like when we had to do streaming during COVID, I mean, that put a lot of stress on churches, especially their tech staff that had to learn whole new skill sets. What's a resi mm -hmm. and how does this Kodak work? And there, I mean, again, multiple points of need and understanding. Yeah. And so when you, when you go to a conference at a, at a substantial church that has it dialed, um, there has been a lot of hard work and time spent reading manuals and hiring the right people and, and all of that. And it, it's, it takes time. I'm just going to say that. Well, and I always, I'm always amused. I've had this happen multiple times where a pastor will come back from a conference, go, Oh, I really loved what they did here, blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because I know the people who did the conference and I've talked to them. Hey, how'd your conference go? And they went, yeah, we tried to do this. It was fine. We didn't really like it. You know, <laughs> And then somebody else is going, oh, that's my new goal. Like, yeah, I mean, well, you that, I mean, that's, <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's part of ministry, isn't it? I mean, it's like, I think God calls a church to the people of that city or that town. And you're not necessarily supposed to grab something successful in another mm -hmm. state or another church and bring it back home thinking it's going to work or produce the same results. I mean, what did God call you to do? I think that's right. the leadership thing. You know, I remember people coming to Willow and they wanted to know the, the color of the carpet, the paint on the walls, you know, the toilet paper. I was like, look, I, always, I would always go, who are you? Let me come to your church and experience who you are. What is your right. taste? What artistic colors make you happy? Uh, it's not a formula. It's never been a formula. So, Yeah. Well, back to back to kind of where we were starting to talk about. And Van, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this too, because I think you've had a really um, great history of doing this as well. Scott, talk to us about um, like what you're doing some things intentionally right now to kind of get the next generation involved. Um, yeah. what, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And like, give give us the the good and the bad of that. Well, we just had an outreach, you know, to kind of tell our congregation what are some of the opportunities, whether it be volunteer um, or, you know, to get involved. I'll just use the technical side of our, our situation right now of where we're needing people either in the video department, lighting department or audio department. Uh, describe our needs, uh, have them show up on a Saturday when we're actually putting a service together 
you know, we call it shadowing, like sit behind or around the, the type of job you want to do, uh, you know, pay attention to how it's happening, be in the moment, you know, what are the responsibilities? And, you know, I'm also really wanting to develop it in our youth group because um, coming out of COVID, they're kind of in a building process. And that is where you really find uh, sometimes some very talented young people uh, that will learn your DNA, that will possibly be the ones to take over. And they're, they're raised internally, which makes it even better. So they understand, you know, the culture and the vision. And I mean, that's just so important uh, to make the, even the technical things work properly. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we're right now, we're updating consoles, we're updating uh, PA systems across all of our campuses, wireless systems. Uh, we're making it known to people that might be interested what we're doing to attract them to become a part here at the beginning to learn these tools, uh, we're setting up days to explain, you know, show files and what that is and templates and how we're starting and trying to set up people to win and sometimes take the pressure off them to show how we're giving them a starting place on the mm -hmm. audio console, um, you know, helping our leaders be able to communicate better uh, to their teams I mean, my boss said something and I love it and I, I share it a lot. Um, communica 100% communication solves 100% of the problems. Mm. And we are just trying to always communicate, over communicate um, everything. And right now it's working. So um, that's what we're doing. Well, I, ben, I think that you've. Yeah, I was going to say I, go. I was just going to say that that's amazing. And I don't, I don't think a lot of churches are are that intentional about it well on the tech side so that's i mean i think you know that's 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 really cool uh, well i yeah. i think part well, of it is that i've been in this a long time <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah it, it's it's um you know you just have to and and it's a it's one of those line upon line precept upon on precept things you can't get tired of telling them the same thing over and over and over again just so it's ingrained in right. your head you know and I've always looked at it as, well, I'm a pretty stubborn person and I've had to been told on some things like 55,000 times, you know, um, yeah. the Bible is really only about what, like five or six things, but yet it's this thick because we just have to be told <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I, one thing I was thinking when you were talking to though, is, uh, is, is I, I'd love to know what you think about, cause I've always known that when you do stuff like this, there's always going to be people at different levels. Sure. People are going to come in at different levels and you got to be able to be okay with that. Right. Like, yeah. you know, some people are just going to always show up when they're scheduled and they don't want anything more. They will serve their hearts out when they're there, but they don't want to go up the ladder. They just love serving. And then on the other side, you've got like young rock stars who you basically are going to teach everything to for the, the time they're there. Sure. And, and then they're going to go off and, and, you know, and, and do great things. I, th um, I think that's just using your wisdom in the situation. Like to break down my week, um, part of my week is offering opportunities for an individual to show up either in broadcast monitors or front of house where we have virtual sound checks set up at all three positions. And, you know, to, Hey, let's get on this desk. Let me throw on a pair of inners. You throw on a pair of inners, and let's mix, you know, monitors for the band starting to scratch. And, you know, that is to me invaluable because it's instant access to me and what am I thinking, and also reaching over their shoulders to show them, you know, maybe where a high pass or low pass filter is to to quickly get their mind in the flow and in the zone of actually working a service. And so part of my week by design, by my job description is doing things like that and setting up those opportunities because I'm a hands-on learner. I'm no good at reading a manual. I'm kind of like you, when you said the analog desk, I remember I sat down with Robert Scoville, bringing it up one more time. Um, he told, I said, I feel really blessed and lucky that I learned on the analog console. And he said, you should be, feel that way because it's the roadmap to digital. 
and it, it, it's like how digital is working under the hood. And so um, I like to, again, give anybody an opportunity that wants to join us to come in and do virtual sound checks. But then I'm honest at times, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure this is where your skill set is best used or if you're ever going to get it. I'm, 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 I, I'm pretty honest at times because uh, it, it's just to me a waste of time if, if somebody is just not getting the concept of mixing. But we have so many other opportunities on the stage to fulfill a service from simple things like bringing out tables or moving set pieces around to setting up microphones for special, you know, songs in the service and just all, which sometimes they're like, oh, this is way better. I'd rather be doing this, mm -hmm. you know, lots of needs. Well, and I think that's the, honestly, that's the, you know, the mark of a good tech director um, is to be able to look at everybody on the team, or just a leader in general, not just a tech director, but this is what we're talking about and just be able to go, Hey, um, you know, this really isn't for you. Like I did that a lot in 20 years of leading tech in church. I was able, I, I learned cause I learned from good mentors early on, but sometimes you just gotta not fire people. In this. Well, sometimes you have to fire volunteers, but that's a whole nother, we could talk for another hour on that. But, um, sometimes you have to be it's, honestly, I, I've had similar conversations where they actually said to me, Oh, thank goodness. I thought you were going to totally rely on me for this. And Tom, to be honest, I don't like it. It's too much. It's too much stress. It's too much whatever. Yeah. Right. And you know, the, one of the craziest ones is pro presenter, you know, people think, Oh, pro presenter, that's the, that's the entry. I'm like, no, actually pro presenter is pretty stressful. Um, and not everybody can hang handle <laughs> doing song words. Right. Cause you got to both lead and follow the band simultaneously. Right. And that's a very hard, it's a very hard job, you know? I, I got kind of a funny story on what you're saying. We were at the US ITT event happens here in St. Louis. And uh, there was this t-shirt that said, go means go. And thinking in a service when you're, you're calling a service and, and there's different transitions, some people freeze it, you know? And if you're a person when director guy says go and you haven't gone yet, that's a problem. <laughs> And so, you know, they've, they've started to make these little cynical, uh, cynical comments now because we get in these situations where, you know, go means go. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really funny, you know, not to harp too much on, on pro presenter, but, you know, coaching, and we've all done this, all three of us have done this, where you sit behind the person and you just go, next slide, while the song's going. So you're, you're training their brain. You know, because all of us, we won't talk about when you should actually go to the next slide because I'm, we might all have different opinions. But I have a certain, I have an absolute cadence of how I want it done when I'm the tech yep. director, right? Yep. And so, and so I would literally sit by the person just nicely and go, next slide, next slide, next slide. And they're like, wow, you must be exhausted. I'm like, but you know when the next slide is, right? And they'll be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I get it now. <laughs> I love what you said because the service is like a cadence. I've heard that statement used before, and I just to, just to bounce off that, you know, you've got to be in sync, in rhythm, in cadence. The whole mm. thing is about transitions. That that's always the mark of a great production team. That everything just is in a rhythm, all through the yeah. service, you know. And and that takes practice. That takes gelling together, consistency. Um, so. Yeah, the last yeah. the last church I was TD at. Um, I went to a service like secret shopper, you know, like just went to a service and just had an <laughs> audience. And then I was talking to the lady that was trying to hire me. And she said, what do you think our biggest weaknesses? I said, your transitions are terrifying for the audience because yeah. they don't know what to do or what to expect or what's happening next. And, and they don't know I said, one of the reasons I said, your songs are fine. Preaching is awesome. Yeah. Um, there's other stuff that needs to be fixed technically, but, uh, but that's all fixable. I said, but honestly, the worst part of the, ser all of your services. And I sat through three services was that your the, the, your people in the audience have no idea what's happening and they're terrified. They're literally terrified. Like you could see right. on their faces because, because they were so, because the transitions were so awkward, you know? Yep.
And I think a, the mark of a good tech director is you have to be thinking about the transitions, but you also have to be thinking not about this transition, but the next transition and the next, you have to be thinking two transitions ahead. So you keep everybody moving in the right, you know, moving in the right direction. Yeah. My favorite uh, tech director was Matt Wilkerson when I was at Willow Creek, because what I loved about the way he leads, he would forecast everything to me um, beats ahead. So I was already mentally, I, I was like, I, could, I was mixing and I was never worried that I was going to miss anything coming because Matt would just simply softly say to me, you know, hey, video rolls coming up, you know, and then there'd be like a, a five, four, three, two, one, like, but there was always this forecast about what was coming and it just relaxed me so I could do my job because the minute you get tense or, or there's a mistake and, and your mind's staying back on that mistake, thinking about oh, how could I have made it better? How, you can't do any of that. The train is moving. And again, that's all experience that you you get through those things. But yeah, like a, a director that's, you know, forecasting things and giving great direction really makes the team work well. Yeah. Once you well, train, once you train a director to be able to direct like that on the comm, it's like, cause I worked yeah. like with you, I worked with, um, great, a bunch of, we had, when I was a Saddleback, uh, we had a director when I first got there, her name was Lee Mastis. She went on to be at CNN and the home shopping network and she did all tons of stuff, but she was so good at explaining stuff. And then I don't know if you know, well, Duke knows Tracy Tyson, who I worked with at Mariners for many years and she does tons and tons of stuff in Tennessee, opera land flies all over the place. She was awesome. And she was so good at being able to make sure everybody knew exactly what was going to happen. And if she wanted something, she was two shots ahead for the camera people. She was, and she was just so good at the flow of everything. And she kept everybody and she never raised her voice. She was always very calm, you know? And I think that's when you have people like that, it's just, it makes the tech director's job a lot easier when you have other people that are calling the show, you know, that just really are good at just kind of knowing where we're going, keeping everybody on the same page, you know, that that's but I think, absolutely. I think everything you guys are talking about though is, is so key when you're talking about bringing in young people and, and training. I mean, they don't have to be young, but when you're training up new people, like you've got to be a great director in order to give them the, the best opportunity to succeed. And so if you can learn, if you can be active at bringing new people in, young people in in particular, and, and hone your craft at being a good director, you're, you're going to, you're going to be amazed at what some of these guys can do. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, well, one of the, th yeah, one of the things I'd love for you to speak to, cause you and I've actually had several conversations about this is figuring out, what people are good at and then and then you know like honing that skill not trying to square fit square pegs into round holes you know in the tech you know when you're when you're putting volunteers in places like what kind of what's your like what's your take on that is it totally organic or do you have a process on that i think it's when they show up the shadow and start turning over the reins to people Either it self-corrects and they can quickly identify more of their gift set, or you could see, oh my gosh, like the way you were able to talk to the band and get them on stage in that transition was amazing. Like it, it's, it's like a mothering skill. I, th I think a female a lot of times is the best stage manager because there's something about, you know, herding cats, like getting them focused, you know, jingle the keys here over here over here and then go out and <laughs> yeah. do your thing again that's nothing against artists but artists backstage tend to have conversations and suddenly they're talking about next wednesday and they have to walk out in two minutes so just keeping everybody focused and and you see those things a lot of times i mean I, i'm just talking about some people i've seen here that we've got them in their roles because they're so good and 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 comfortly commanding in those situations uh, to get talent on the stage and get them off the stage and nobody's feelings are hurt and everybody's happy. And yeah, just there's many different skill sets used in our job. Well, and you want a I happy crew, you know, you want a happy crew. You honestly, you do. Cause yeah. 
then they're not, you know, then they're going to want to stay there and be part of the family. Yeah. Well, and I've had some situations where like the, we had a need at lighting. I, I remember one guy in particular, we had a need at lighting. So he was like, all right, I'll volunteer. I'll learn lighting. And like every time we had a break before and after service, he was over always over looking at the cameras because he was just fascinated by how the cameras dealt with the lighting. And after a while, we were just like, yeah, you're not a lighting guy. Let's get you on a camera. Right. I mean, I think sometimes it's just as simple as, you know, people who really love to do audio or really want to learn audio, like you have to kick them out of the building after service is done, especially if you have virtual sound check. Whereas somebody who's just doing it because they feel like they're in it or because they feel like they're doing you a favor, like the second the man is done, I have consoles covered and they're gone. I am going to jump on what you just said because that is the, that's the thing I'm looking for. The young uh, boy or girl that's tugging on my shirt at the end of service, can I do more? Can I do more? Because they're going to get it. They're going to win it. They're, you know, it's like anything. And I will spend so much time with them because they're pulling it out of me. And I love that. I absolutely love that. And yeah. to that, go, to go back to the other question about how you see like a talent on somebody. I had a young man, you know, we would clear the stage. But when this young man took the mic stands, and different items to put them back where they belong. It was very neatly done. Some people, it's toss and go. Well, I kept seeing that, so I put him inside one of our storage rooms and said, can you make this look great? In a couple of days, it was immaculate. Like, and he got so much joy, and he, and he put signs on things. I got him brother label tape. He goes, could you give me this size label tape? I said, absolutely. He labeled right. everything. I will absolutely empower somebody like that. And you got to be watching for that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I always remember, uh, I had a kid, uh, who now teaches for LA film school. Um, but when I got him, when he was 15 and you know, how we talk about people that can do things and can't, his dad brought him to serve and they t wanted to do something together. Right. Well, after, Oh, after uh, a weekend, his dad came to me and goes, okay, I am too e OCD for this job. And I was stressed out the entire time. There's no way I can be on the tech team, he goes, <laughs> but my son loved it. And I was wondering if it'd be okay if he could, you know, and, and I was like, sure. And so and then we taught him to do lighting. And one day I'm in my office and I see like like one of the moving lights like shines through my door and I'm like, who is in the auditorium with the lights on? So I go out there and here's that kid got the whole rig up and you know, like right after school and he, and he looked at me like, Oh no, I've just killed the dog. You know, that's what he looked like. And he goes, is it okay if I'm here? I'm like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Please come. And, and he would come every day after school and then he ended up, going to one of the biggest churches in Florida and being their LD for six or seven years and then went on to teach at LA film school and still doing that today. And he's a great LD and he it's because he just, and I, I totally just said, no, come in every day. I don't care. It, it's that story that we hear for success all the time. Preparation meets opportunity. And it's a drive that you have to have yourself there's nobody's going to do it for you. Right. And I think we're just saying, we give you, we will give you the opportunity. If you're hungry, jump in and we will give you all the opportunity you need. And mm. then it's up to you. Well, and I yeah. think in this, I think people will ask, Hey, do you want to be a part of this? And then it's up to you. Like you just said, but it's really up to you, no matter what your age is to, so, to go, I want to do this. And yeah. I'm going to just do it. I mean, I think that's how all of us were. I mean, you know, I, I started out, I started mixing and acquiring when I was in high school and I just kept pushing myself into things. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget the first time I mixed on a gamble EX 56. Holy cow. Kids don't know what those are. <laughs> it was at a, it was at the assembly of God youth convention in San Francisco. And, uh, I was one of the guys, the opening bands and I walked up to the console and I went, wow, I don't know what any of this stuff does because I've been mixing on uh, Biamps and, you know, little Yamahas. 
And so all I did is I asked the guy who was the head guy, I said, look, I know what this band's supposed to sound like, but there's no way I'm going to get it to sound good on this console. Can you help me? And he just laughed and he went, absolutely. And he, and that was the first time I mixed on a big console and he helped me do it. And I, I never will forget that story. Two, two things I want to add to what you just said. People love giving away their knowledge. People love sharing. You just got to ask. And one of the things in this career choice or lots of things in life is taking risks. And one of the biggest things I learned recently, and I hate to say it was recently, but um, without failing in life, you'll never advance in life. And what they're mm -hmm. saying is you're not taking risks. And this is all about stepping out of your comfort zone and taking a risk and doing everything you can. And even if you fail, it's not about failing. It's how you recover. So, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, it's all about the recovery and, and just keep going. And we all have, we're, we've all been there. There's no and, like, it's, and it's a perfect thing all the way through. Well, and I think you said it. I don't actually think, I mean, yeah, learn it. But you said I learned it later in life. But I mean, honestly, I still fail at stuff all the time. I, I think we all do. And we need to just learn from it. We can't see it as, okay, this crashed me. I'm going to give up. I'm going to take my, you know, I'm going to take my toy fire engine and go home. I'm done. You know, yeah. um, I think, you know, the, the people that su are successful and succeed are the ones that say, okay, that sucked. Yeah. I didn't like that. What can I learn from it? How can I make it better next time and just move on and, and just keep getting better no matter what your age is, no matter how long you've right. been doing it. And the, and the other thing is it's, it's about levels of accomplishment. So that's why I'm going to go back to the youth group. You're able to make mistakes in a youth group setting that might not be acceptable in the main church. So opportunities, let's have those in the youth group with the audio, video, video and lighting and have, you know, rehearsals and practices. And, you know, most youth pastors I know, they are totally okay with kids making mistakes behind consoles and lighting desks. They get it. It's built in. But that's where you get good and your skill yep. set gets sharpened to go to the big house so those mistakes don't happen. Well, and as you were, you know, you were talking earlier, I think right before we started recording about how there's not that the church is actually the place to get opportunities in this business a lot more than used to be like when you when we were all oh, coming for sure. up. Because like yeah. you were saying, the clubs the clubs, small music venues and stuff like that, a lot of those are just gone. They're gone, yeah. And, yeah, and there's no place to to really get your, you know, get your your, your uh, um, teeth in. Your this. chops, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and not knowing the audience here, I want to explain what a club is. So you kind of <laughs> said it. It's a live event. <laughs> you know, it's a place where a PA has been installed and a band will show up with park hands and a lighting desk and a sound desk and play music. And they used to I be thought everywhere. It was, uh, I thought it was a guy <laughs> with an iPod. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just trying to like, I've been learning that a lot of the things I talk about my age now, right. I get just, you know, look sideways. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. If I say that to young, time, yeah. the young kids now, they'll be like, you mean a bar? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we used to put our equipment, you know, in a trailer and pull it behind a truck and unload amp, amp racks and speakers and set up microphones, you know, every weekend. And we would have an opportunity to play at a VFW, a Legion Hall, a live music club. I mean, this was everywhere. This is before the Internet, um, you know, before MTV. And yep. it was awesome. Well, and, <laughs> and too, you know, it's really interesting to me, too, because... A lot of the, um, a lot of the troubleshooting skills that I have today came from doing shows in less, uh, shall I say, less than optimal uh, conditions of audio, video, and lighting, where very, very I true. was the leper with the most fingers, as my dad always used to say, and uh, I wasn't. <laughs> A smart guy, but I was the smartest guy in the room and I could actually fix, you know, I, I can't tell you, and I'm sure you guys are the same. I can't tell you how many church club, uh, coffee house, whatever, uh, sound systems. I rewired five minutes oh, come on. before the show started. 
Yeah, you I'm know not... what taught me polarity on a speaker is banana plugs. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. oh to the nobody banana knows plugs, what I'm right? talking about right now, probably. Yeah. But you know, yeah. all you had to do is pick the banana plug and turn it the other way, plug it back in, and and now your yeah. positive was right, your negative was right. Well, especially when you had exploded better. when yeah. you had exploded systems, right? <laughs> Back in the right. days, you know, we had component <laughs> systems and you'd be like, I'd be, I'd walk in and go, man, this sounds terrible. And I'd go back in the amp rack and absolutely without a doubt, there would be at least two amplifiers where the speakers were out of phase with the rest of the rest sure. of the speakers. And I'd be like, yeah. uh, I don't think that's right. I just turn them and then we'd walk back out there and like, wow, the sound system sounds so much better. And I'm really like, well, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> so it sound we're good, but. And now to, to, to bring it back, what we're saying, we want you guys to do this in the youth group or just get involved in the church production department because that's where all these opportunities that we're talking about, where you'll see an amp rack, you'll see lighting dimmers, you'll see all the stuff we saw back then, and you can proceed to learn it. And, well, and I always tell people, I say the thing that's kept me employed is not just that I can mix or not just because people like working with me. But a lot of times I got hired and kept, they kept hiring me because I could, they knew I could troubleshoot something bad happened. They knew I would be able to fix it or figure it out or yeah. whatever. And a lot of people these days, they'll just come. It's just like, it's broke. Okay. Well, what's wrong? <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay. Well, how do you know it doesn't work? It didn't turn on. Okay. What was your, what, what was your, uh, checklist to determine how, what was wrong with it? Oh, I don't have a checklist. I just, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is a problem right there. So you know, people, people you just, just don't have that. You, you just stirred up another story. So there's a company I know that um, does production at a very large level. And the owner of this company was observing something about the age of the employees and their ability to handle, let's just say, two pieces of gear that won't talk to each other. If it was a younger person and the box A was supposed to talk to box B and it didn't happen immediately, they were done with it. Stupid thing, doesn't work. The right. older person with the wisdom of this in the past would work at it and figure it out because sometimes what the directions say isn't true, but yeah. with a little tenacity, and maybe a few phone calls from other people, you can figure it out. But th there's a lot of things right. in our line of work that sometimes it says it's supposed to do a certain thing, but it doesn't right, like you just, you know, when you open your iPhone, you just want to turn it on it and it better work. Right. A lot of things in our world isn't like that because there's so many different languages and IP addresses and oh my gosh. Yeah. And if you have a nerd friend that's into IP, make him your best friend in this industry. <laughs> because <laughs> right, exactly. it's a much needed skill but yeah. not to diverse i i feel like that's going to be another episode so um, and we're <laughs> we're actually we're actually already about 10 minutes over our time so okay <laughs> we're just too we good but, <laughs> but we could talk to you forever scott so we'll definitely we, have we you just had to, yeah we'll have, uh, to have you back yeah there's, there's i've enjoyed more this friend um, well, but people, it's it's been people, it's been good and if if you're a young person hopefully you've taken some encouragement and and a little bit of advice and i'd say if you're if you're an older folk, if you're uh, somebody who's been doing this for many years and you're leading teams, um, please hear this from guys who all started in high school because somebody took a chance, and um, and hear some of what we said today and and maybe take some chances on some young folks in your ministry and your in your sphere of influence um, because some of those folks may may end up doing actually a lot cooler things than you ever got to. And, and that's, that's a win for everybody. That's a win for them, but it's also a win for you. Yeah. So. I think we were all, I mean, all three of us can probably say we were kind of, we were probably, you know, doofuses when we were young, but somebody <laughs> saw something in each one of us and said, there's yeah. something about this person that I think they'll actually be able to do this. I know people that, yep, yep. I know that happened with me for sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, Scott, if, so, yeah, with that, you, if they want to reach out to you, where can they reach out to you at? Um, <laughs> You know, I'm still the old guy. I do a lot of stuff on Facebook. That's kind of my only go-to. I don't have a lot of time for social media. So since I started there many moons ago, I'm still there. There you um, go. There you and go. Hit me up. Cool. We'll put it. We'll we'll put a link down below, and uh, we'll put our our contact info below as well. But uh, Scott, thanks for joining us. We'll we'll yeah. definitely have you back because obviously we could keep going for a long time. <laughs> 
Yes, sir. So right. uh, thanks for thanks for listening to the Insights Podcast. Uh, make sure you follow, subscribe uh, to our, our video channel here on YouTube. Uh, lots of good stuff, including this podcast, as well as other videos on, on gear, on uh, cool things that we're seeing out on the road, all kinds of stuff. It's uh, uh, If it's interesting to us, we, we hope it's interesting to you, and it might end up on YouTube. So, uh, And if you have uh, any ideas of things that you'd like us to, to cover or guests that you'd like us to get on, uh, just let us know. Hit us up. Uh, leave leave some notes down below, and uh, we'll we'll see if we can't work it in. Yep. So I do read all. Thanks I do for read listening. All the comment. I do read all the comments, we do. and uh, so. we do, yeah. we do indeed. So, thanks for listening. We'll uh, we'll catch you next episode.